to hear, our ears must capture sound, transmit it to the organ of corti, and translate it into neural impulses to be delivered to the brain. The organ of corti is located in the cochlea, a spiral, three-chambered, snail-like structure, 10 millimeters wide, within a bony matrix. The organ of corti extends from the anterior part of the vestibule and coils for about two and a half turns around a bony pillar called the modialis. In cross-section, the uppermost chamber is called the scala vestibuli. The oval window is situated at the base of this chamber. The lowermost chamber is called the scala tympani. At the base of this chamber is where the round window is located. Both the scala vestibuli and scala tympani contain perilymph. Between the scala vestibuli and scala tympani is the scala media. This houses the organ of corti, which is referred to as the receptor organ of hearing. The scala media is filled with endolymph. The scala media includes structures from the tectorial membrane, basilar membrane, and hair cells, which sense the mechanical forces. The hair cells are located between the tectorial and basilar membranes, Approximately 16,000 hair cells are within the cochlea. There are two kinds of hair cells, inner and outer hair cells. 95% of the afferent fibers are from the inner hair cells, the sensory receptors that communicate with neurons from cranial nerve 8. Outer hair cells receive mostly efferent input from the superior olivary complex. The filamentous structures that connect the tips of adjacent stereocilia are known as tip links. These are thought to amplify the forces in the area of the molecular sensors. How does sound enter the cochlea? Compression hits the tympanic membrane causing the stapes to transfer force to the oval window. The sound travels down the scala vestibuli, around the helicotrema, to the scala tympani, allowing its fluid perilymph to mix. From there, sound moves to the round window. High frequencies are encoded at the base, and low frequencies at the apex. It is this property that leads to the tonotopic map along the base of the membrane. The manner in which the basilar membrane vibrates in response to sound is the key to understanding cochlear function. The hair cells are located between the tectorial and basilar membranes and are stimulated by the shearing force between the two caused by the pivot point of the two membranes. The pivot point of the basilar membrane becomes displaced. The tectorial membrane moves across the tops of the hair cells, causing the stereocilia to bend. The ionic environment of the compartments plays a critical role in signal transduction. The apical portion of the hair cell is bathed in high potassium solution, and the base of the hair cell is bathed in potassium poor solution. This causes the opening of mechanosensitive channels, allowing potassium to flow into the cell, leading to depolarization.
This, in turn, opens calcium channels at the basal end of the cell, leading to vesicular transmitter release to stimulate the nerve. Because the relative voltage and potassium levels are low at the base of the hair cell, potassium flows out of the cell. This establishes that potassium flow through the cell is used for both depolarization, potassium in at the apex, and repolarization, potassium out at the base of the hair cell.